Longest Night by Cassie Alexander. Camping. You're joking, I said, after Paco met me in the driveway of the place he was living with his car at the ready. Sure enough, the back seat of his four-wheel drive Subaru was full of camping supplies, including two sleeping bags and enough wood for a bonfire. He crossed his arms and gave me a smug look. Nope, we're going. I squinted at him. It was frigid outside now, snowing in town, and who knew how bad it was up in the hills. I'm not dressed for it, I said, balking like a stubborn pony. I was only in jeans, a shirt, and a light jacket. Without being given prior appropriate warning, I'd only dressed for Netflix and freeze solid. It doesn't matter. You're already dead. Ha ha, I said in an unfunny tone. Seriously, Paco, what if we don't get back in time? As a vampire, I was very concerned about sunrise. Then I'll pop you in the trunk until sundown tomorrow. I knew he was teasing, but my thoughts about that were best left unsaid. Paco tossed the last of his supplies into his subi, slammed the door shut, then turned toward me with a hopeful smile. Come on, Jack. It's the longest night of the year, he said. He was wearing an undershirt, a sweater, and a puffy coat, and was now giving me the kind of grin that made me want to peel all his layers off with my teeth. And we never do anything wholesome. It was winter solstice. Neither of us actually like wholesome, I complained. But seeing as he'd apparently planned all of this to surprise me, I couldn't tell him no. I sighed loudly, then trudged up to the front seat and got in. We're going to be cold, I muttered as he joined me on the driver's side. Not for long, he promised, and then pulled the car out. We drove through desert scenery up into the hills, and I was willing to admit that Paco had a point. I never left the city or its suburbs because there was nothing out here for me, and unlike vampires in the movies, I would far, far, far rather find humans to sleep with or bleed than go out into the forest and wrestle wild creatures for my sustenance. But the further out into nature we got, the more starkly beautiful the scenery became. The moon was high, casting a gray pale over everything. The distant peaks of mountains that my vampire-powered enhanced vision let me see, and the snow-covered boulders and pine trees as we slowly gained elevation. I felt like we'd passed through some portal to another world where it was always a softly glowing night, and part of me wished strongly that that were true. Told you, Paco said. It wasn't a question, though. He knew he was right by my thoughtful silence. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty, I granted, glancing over at him, catching his smile in profile. But what was prettier than anything outside was him. Sometimes it felt, when I started looking at Paco, like I couldn't stop like my eyes were as hungry as the rest of me always was. Sometimes he was so breathtakingly beautiful, it was probably a good thing I didn't always need to breathe. And I ached for a way to tell him that. We'd only been going out, or whatever this thing between us was, for a few months now, catching time with one another as we could. He was the only person in Vegas who knew my secret, and I couldn't blow it with him. Not because he gave me blood willingly, but because he was the only person I knew who still made me feel human. That was far more important to me than his blood. Paco looked over and caught me staring. What? he asked. Nothing, I lied, then grinned at him. I just can't wait to get you alone in a tent. 
He laughed and said, Tent? Who said anything about a tent? As he pulled onto a road off of the highway. I watched us climb to a higher elevation with a sense of anticipation as a light snow began to fall. Where are we going? My buddy's cabin, Paco said triumphantly, parking in front of a small grove of trees. Sure enough, there was a small building beyond, all log cabiny with darkened windows. I felt a small surge of totally inappropriate possessiveness as he parked. What kind of buddy, I asked. A guy who works with me, Paco said with a snort as he turned toward me in the car, his brow high with amusement. Why? Jealous? Of anyone who gets to spend time with you? Always. The corners of his lips quirked up, pleased, and he leaned over to quickly kiss me before pulling back. Give me a second. Let me go turn the Jenny on. I licked my lips, tracing the space of his brief kiss, and then hopped out of the car to walk up to the cabin. I kicked the snow off of my shoes on the front step, at least I was wearing boots, and then peered in a darkened window. A moment later, I heard an engine start and saw a warm yellow light inside the cabin turn on. Paco came back and jingled keys for me to move so he could open the front door. We'll have to start a fire, he said, but I brought a ton of wood. I'll say, I agreed, stepping inside after him as he laughed. The studio cabin was as cozy indoors as it appeared without, and Paco made several trips back and forth with all the things he'd packed while I looked around. It had a fireplace that doubled as a stove, a small kitchen counter, a couch, a table, and a queen-sized bed, which Paco had flung our sleeping bags on. I picked one up while he busied himself on his next task. This is why I assumed we were camping. No, I'm just polite. I don't want to have to buy him a new mattress after tonight. I mean, I can afford it, but I didn't want to have to haul it up here, he said in a teasing tone, while kneeling in front of the fireplace, creating a crosshatch of wood with tinder beneath it. He knelt down to try to light it, and I enjoyed watching the strong lines of his muscular thighs as they led up to his ass. I just wanted us to have a short vacation, was all, he went on. His comment made me tense. It wasn't like I could go on a cruise, Did he want things I couldn't give him? This cabin was about as far as I'd feel safe being outside of town, knowing I could get back to my dark apartment where I was safe to die at dawn. Are you having fun so far then? I asked. The third match was the charm. Paco blew gently on the glowing flame, and it licked up the tinder until it caught the larger pieces of wood on fire. Of course, he said, looking back up at me. Except for the part where you almost said no, that is. I grinned, somewhat relieved. For what it's worth now, I'm sorry, Paco. I should have trusted you. He snorted ruefully as he stood and stretched his hands out to the flame, taking off his gloves. God, I wish I'd taped that. Too bad you missed your chance. I walked up behind him, wrapping my arms around him to rest my chin on his shoulder so we could stare at the fire together. Paco's arms chased mine for a moment, holding me to him, and I felt a surge of longing for everything normal in my former life. But if I were still human, I wouldn't be like this with him here. I nuzzled my face through the tiny hairs at the back of his neck, breathing the scent of snow still trapped against his skin. And I wondered if he wished things were different, too. So, tell me, what else happens in this bucolic winter wonderland of yours? I asked. 
My fingers found the tab of his jacket zipper and started to tug. He made a thoughtful sound. Honestly, I hadn't thought that far. No, I feigned innocence, listening to the teeth of the zipper slowly grind. I reached the bottom, separated it, and then kept going with one hand, groping the front of his jeans, feeling the growing outline of his cock. Yeah, he breathed as my hand brushed him, and he instantly spread his legs a little, leaning back against me, giving my hand more room. I mean, we could do what we always do. And what's that? I asked, rubbing him, pulling his hips against mine so he could feel how hard I was right behind him. Go on, I urged him, my voice low with promise. The usual, he whispered as my other hand went inside his coat to feel his heart thump against it. Ah, uh -huh. the usual part where I fuck you to within an inch of your life? Possibly literally, if I bite you? I asked him, stroking my palm up and down. He shuddered against me and huffed a sigh. Yeah, that. Good, Paco, I told him, and would have sworn I could hear him purr. Because I don't know if you know this, but that's my favorite thing. He twisted his head toward me. Out of all the people you fuck? Everywhere? Who's jealous now? I asked him. But then, before he could answer me, I told him, don't speak. He sucked in whatever it was he'd been about to say with a gasp as I released him, stepping back. Turn around, I commanded him, and he did so. His chest was heaving now, his lips lightly parted, and his nostrils flared. Either he was really pissed at me, or very turned on. If you didn't have a vision for tonight, can I take charge? I asked him. He knew this was a power of mine, but I'd never used it on him before, much less without asking first. But he nodded, slowly, and I nodded back at him. Okay, then. If something goes wrong, or feels wrong, or you need a break, just snap. All right? I snapped by way of illustration, and he nodded again. Good, I told him. Take your coat off. His eyes glittered at me, and he didn't move. And when I realized he was misbehaving on purpose, I got so fucking turned on my fangs wanted to drop. So, it's like that, is it? I asked him. He gave me a challenging look as one side of his lips lifted into a knowing smirk. Oh, it's fucking on now, I warned him. In all the best possible ways. I gave him a thoughtful sweep with my eyes, determining the best course of punishment for his crime. The fire was catching decently behind him, and between that and the snow outside, this occasion might have been the most Christmassy I'd ever felt, and Paco was the present that I wanted to unwrap. Take off your coat, I commanded him. He shrugged his puffy jacket off and let it fall to the floor. Sweater too, I asked in a normal tone, hoping to trip him up. But his eyes flashed mischief and, fuck me, sweater, now, I growled. He moved to do as he'd been told, but he did it in his own time, making a show of reaching for the sweater's hem then slowly pulling it up his body, revealing the tight, dark T-shirt he was wearing underneath before dropping the sweater to the ground. Then his eyes searched mine 
waiting for his next command. I stepped forward, into his personal space. I should make you strip naked and stand in front of the fire until, what, 4.30? Then you could just drive us back to town. He pursed his lips and narrowed his eyes, in clear disbelief, and I laughed. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen either, I agreed. But there are going to be consequences, Paco, and I don't think you're going to like them very much. I watched a swallow roll his Adam's apple up and down. Nervous? Hopeful? Both? I was about to find out. Show yourself to me, I whispered, and his hands dropped immediately to his waistline, reaching for the front of his jeans. He'd lost whatever surety he'd had when he'd been removing his sweater, as he quickly undid the buttons and shoved down his boxer briefs. His thick and heavy cock fell out like someone had yelled, Timber! and then pointed for me like the end of a magnet. I made a soft groan of satisfaction and took him in my hand, stroking him, listening to him hiss and watching his eyes close. I'd already learned so much about him in our brief time together, what made him feel good, what turned him on. I kept my grip loose, barely tracing my hand against his skin, twisting when I reached his head and heard him moan. He got hotter and harder, and I stopped. His eyes blinked open to stare at me, grievously wounded. I know, I said in my most sympathetic tone. It's all fun and games until your vampire boyfriend won't let you come. He gasped at that, and I nodded sincerely. You can't come, Paco. Not until I say so. He made a strangled sound. Well, you should have thought of that before you misbehaved, huh? Eh? I said, kicking off my boots before sinking to my knees in front of him. I folded his coat up to make my knees more comfortable, because he wasn't going to be. His worried gaze followed my passage down, and I took him in my hand again, stroking the eager pre-cum beading at his tip with my thumb, taking it down to the sensitive space below the head of his cock and rubbing it there. His jaw dropped, and he started to breathe harder as I watched the slit of his head leak and drool. That's right. Paco, I know everything you like, I told him, looking up as I leaned forward so he could feel the heat of my words as I spoke them. And I'm going to do all of it to you. You're just going to have to take it. With that, I pulled his cock into my mouth. No pretense, no teasing, no hesitation. I put my hands on his hips and dove forward, taking as much of his length into my mouth and throat at once as I could and heard him grunt like I had punched him. I wrapped my lips around him and gave him head savagely, feeling him hit at the back of my throat and bend down, sucking and slurping in the rough, hungry way I knew made him wild. Paco liked something of the danger in me and I loved the freedom of being safely dangerous around him. One of his hands grabbed into my hair, and the other clutched my shoulder as he started to thrust. I pulled off of him instantly. You're not in charge of this ride. You can touch yourself, but not me. He groaned heavily again, as his hands released me, then hovered, like they were looking for some place else to be. One caught into the fabric of his t-shirt and twisted up, showing me the thin trail of dark fur leading down his stomach. 
and the other shoved his jeans down more, exposing his sack. Mm, yeah, I said, leaning down to lick it, stroking his spit-glazed cock with my hand. Give me everything. Paco made a noise that was almost unhappy, and I let my eyes flash up. His jaw was dropped and his pupils were wide enough for me to swim in. You good? I asked. He silently nodded, and I felt the weight of all the words I had denied him in the tension of his expression. It's a lot, I guessed, and he nodded again. Yeah, it's meant to be. Trust me, I told him, tonguing the base of his cock where it met his balls. He trimmed the hair down there, which made tasting him everywhere easier. I licked a stripe out to the head of him to take him back in my mouth, heard him moan, felt him shudder, and soon he was rocking his hips back and forth in my time. I allowed him that little bit of control, at least, because I thought he couldn't help himself. And while I wanted to torture him, I wasn't entirely an asshole. Then I was glad I did as his hips started jerking, suddenly out of rhythm, desperately seeking a release I wouldn't grant him. His cock strained against the back of my throat so hard it didn't bend, and he almost gagged me with his need as he started making rough sounds like an animal, completely lost, and I could feel the life pooling in him. Anytime I drank from Paco, it was strong and heady. But this time, it was going to be spectacular. He grunted and groaned, trying to find completion in my mouth, aching to spasm his sack high and tight. I grabbed his hips with both hands, stilling them, and sucked off of him as I rocked back. He gawked down at me, his face tight with betrayal, and I could see the twin points of his hard nipples underneath his shirt. You want more? I asked him. He took his cock in his hand and fisted it, begging me. And it was so fucking hot, I took pity on him. Also, I felt like I needed to fuck him or I would truly die. Take off your clothes and open up a sleeping bag. Now, I growled stroking myself through my jeans. Get on your knees once you're finished. He immediately started kicking off his shoes to do as I had ordered. No power is necessary, and I quickly looked around. Where's the lube? He pointed at one of the bags he'd brought in as he ripped his shirt off. I laughed and went to find it. I kept him waiting as I took off my own clothing much more slowly, and while I fed more wood to the fire, ignoring him and his need completely. He'd put the sleeping bag in front of the fireplace, which was good because it was the warmest spot in the small cabin, but also because I'd turned off the light on my way back. I wanted to see the way the firelight turned his warm brown skin a darker gold. Christ, I whispered, lowering myself to join him. He was on all fours, just like I'd asked. But I was sitting in front of his face now, just looking at him, letting my eyes ravish each and every part, his muscular arms cut with definition as they held his current position, the smooth slope of his back, the curve of his ass, the dimples near his spine, the tension in his spread thighs, and the way his heavy cock bobbed between them. I brought my forehead to his. You still want to come? He nodded and gave a deep whine. Good, I said, and kissed him. Kissing Paco was always something else. Maybe it was how well we knew each other by now. Maybe it was because we gave each other as good as we got but I would have sworn I could always feel a current pass between us when we did it, 
the baton of his lust passed over to me, and then my tongue passing it back, creating energy. Sometimes it felt like I could kiss him for days, and it would keep my hunger satisfied. And I knew he felt the same way about me when I pulled back and he looked lost and dizzy. I... I started to say I love you without thinking because it felt right. But then I bit my lips shut and swallowed. I need you, I said instead, because it was true and because it was safer. I couldn't condemn him with my passion. He had a human boyfriend. He had a life. And he had daylight. I could only have the night. His eyes searched mine, and he kissed me, hard, almost bowling me back with the force of it. And I had a sudden welcome image of him riding me. My legs wound around his hips, fucking me until we both came, breathless and panting. But if we were face to face tonight, there was no way I'd keep my mouth shut. Turn around, I grunted, picking up the lube. One finger, two fingers, three. I knew Paco could take me, but I didn't want to hurt him, especially if he couldn't talk. So I took my time stretching him out with one hand while I stroked myself with the other. It was agony to be patient feeling the tight heat inside him, knowing that same space was moments away from holding my cock. Because I wanted him, now, all of him, for forever. And not for the first time, I considered making him like me, but that would do nothing but put him in danger. And when he looked over his shoulder, his expression was so open and trusting. The earnest gaze of a man hungry to get fucked. I groaned bodily and rose up, slicking my cock with lube before setting my hands on his perfect ass, spreading him wide. I whispered his name as I notched my cock up, my tip pressing against his tight hole and I rocked subtly in and out, watching him open up to take me. He moaned, arching his back, already gasping for more, leaning back to try to force things. Stop that, I commanded, and he stopped mid-thrust. That's right, I told him, bobbing the fat head of my cock in and out of him, enjoying teasing myself as I stroked my hands up and down the sides of his back. This moment's mine. My eyes half-lidded. I started working myself deeper, letting him envelop a little bit more of me each time, until I couldn't take it anymore, and grabbed his hips to yank him back, burying myself inside him. You're mine. I snarled as he grunted. I poured more lube down on the space where we joined because I wanted to speed up and Paco knew what was coming. He braced his hands against the sleeping bag like a statue as I plowed myself into him, sheathing myself in his hot, tight ass with every stroke. By now, I'd had sex with a lot of people. I needed to, to feed, almost every night but no one else ever made me feel like I did with him. Those people were all just something physical. Sure, we'd get each other off, but half the time I didn't bother to find out or remember their names. Whereas this, with him, it was different. I rocked my head back, thrusting into him wildly, listening to the muffled sounds of pleasure he made at the edges where my rules didn't apply. Paco's presence maddened me on a level I didn't want to comprehend. 
I wanted to somehow pull him apart to understand everything about him, to find out everything about his past, to learn everything he wanted for his future. And I wanted to protect him from anything or anyone that might possibly hurt him, up to and including me. He picked up one hand and started snapping his fingers like a castanet. I growled without thinking. I wasn't done with him yet. If you're snapping because you want to come too fucking bad. He kept snapping. I stopped thrusting instantly. Tell me. I heard him take a shuddering inhale, and then he moaned my name. Jack. Look at me. I commanded, and he twisted his head back. He was breathing hard, his eyes were half closed, and sweat traced in beads across his skin, both from the fire and our exertions. You okay? I asked, leaning forward, running a soothing hand up and down the outside of his thigh. He shook his head slowly. I need it. I know you do, I said, then clucked my tongue. But you're gonna have to wait. Jack, he started to complain, but I shoved myself back deep inside him. Fuck, he gasped. Uh-huh, I agreed, as I started back up. Even though I was allowing him to talk now, getting railed had rendered Paco mostly speechless. He made an anguished sound and then started moaning my name in the rhythm of my thrusts. Jack, 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 he groaned, and I loved it. I loved my name on his lips. I loved the thought of shooting my load in his ass, and I loved how desperate he was acting. His whole body shuddered beneath me, riding that hot line right before coming, like he had touched a live wire and he couldn't break free. Soon his hips were rocking out of time with mine, jerky and twitching. I paused and watched him work himself on me, trying to find the release I wouldn't give him. And all the while, I could feel the life swelling in him, like the juice of an overripe fruit. Look at the mess I've made of you, I murmured. And he made another tortured sound. But just think how good it's going to feel when I finally let you come. I felt a full body shiver roll through him and gave a dark chuckle. You're going to grab me so fucking tight, Paco, I promised him. As I spit into my hand and leaned over, reaching beneath him to stroke his cock, I found him rock hard, like a missile ready to launch. God damn, I panted against him, licking his back, feeling my fangs ache to come out. Jack, oh God, Jack, he hissed, falling to his forearms. I braced one arm against the ground and slipped my hand further back to cup his balls. His whole sack was puckered tight, and I ran a finger up and down his seam. And you know what the worst part is, Paco? I asked him, taking over again, forcing him to let me roll our hips in synchrony. No, he groaned, wagging his head back and forth like a lost man. I flicked my tongue against the shell of his ear like a snake. The worst thing is... I promised, that once I let you come, we're going to do this all again, and again, and again. His hands clenched into the sleeping bag, and he almost bucked me. You can't, Jack, he pleaded. I've never needed to come this pad before. You have to, I need it. I have to. I grabbed hold of his cock again and buried myself inside him. Come for me, I commanded, and whatever else he was going to say was lost in a shout of triumph. I felt his cum shoot into my hand as the first wave of his life splashed over me, 
trying to pull me along behind it. I grunted as I rutted myself into him, fighting to stay deep in his ass and fill it up while his hips flailed. Fuck, Paco. I groaned as I pounded him. He was so fucking tight. I was right. I was right. I could feel my cock jerk against his taut walls, and as my hand slicked his cock with his own hot silver, my own started jetting out. I thrust forward and held my hips there, pulsing hard inside him with my release. Paco, 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 I moaned, much the same way as my name had been on his lips earlier while he growled and spasmed, until he sighed like he was exhausted, collapsing down, and I followed him. My legs splayed outside of his, my cock deep inside. I brushed the sweat off of his neck and kissed his shoulder over and over, breathing his name each time. And even after I finally slid out, I crushed my hips against his, still wanting to claim him. He twisted his head so that he could see me, licked his lips and whispered, Jack. I nuzzled him, panting, and he reached a hand back and ran it through my hair before he twisted his body, clearly trying to shake me off. I reluctantly slid to lie face up on the ground beside him, between him and the fire. He rose up on one elbow and stared down at me intently. No one makes me feel like you. Was that good? Was that bad? All I knew was that the longer I was with him, and the longer we were like this, the more likely I was to tell him how I felt. Don't speak, Jack, okay? He asked me. And even though he didn't have vampiric powers, he still had me wrapped around his little finger. I nodded, beginning to feel helpless. He put a hand across my mouth as though he didn't trust me, and I smiled against his palm. I love you, he whispered, and my heart took flight. I know we can't be normal, and I know all the reasons why. But I needed to tell you. He kept his hand exactly where it was as he continued. I've wanted to tell you for a while now, but it didn't feel right. Or I was scared you'd run off. So you trapped me in the woods? I teased him my words muffled against his palm. Shut up, he chided, his eyes searching mine, his gaze serious. And I think you love me too, Jack, so don't lie. I took his hand in mine and pulled it away from my mouth, placing it against my chest. To you? Never, I said, and swallowed feeling elated but also terrified. And of course I love you, Paco, I told him. You're the only place I belong. The gentle light that suffused him then was brighter than any fire could be. I reached up and wound my hand around the back of his head, pulling his lips to mine and his body on top of me. I kissed him tenderly appreciating the curve of his smile, sucking on the tip of his tongue, cherishing every place we met as I spread my legs so that his hips would roll between them. Now that I didn't have to be afraid of saying too much anymore, I pushed his shoulders up, and he put obliging hands on either side of mine to support himself with as he beamed adoringly down. I love you, Paco, I said, feeling amazed I finally got to say the words aloud. And I'm not running. Swear? Yeah, I nodded and took his face between my hands, 
running my fingers into his hair. You don't want to know what I've done to keep you safe, or what I would do to keep you at my side. Concern darkened his expression, and I shook my head. I won't tell you, so don't ask me. I know, he whispered. I won't, and I know shit's complicated, but I need you to know I'll always take what I can get of you, Jack. I pulled him to lie down on top of me so I could kiss him again fully, wrapping him in my arms as my tongue plunged deep into his mouth and took his breath away. When I let him pull back, he made a soft complaint and I could feel his cock between my legs against my balls, flooding with blood and getting hard. I'll always give you everything I can, I promised him and bent my knees to put my feet on the ground, arching my hips up with clear intent. He knew exactly what I was offering, and one of his hands raced between us to line himself up with my asshole. Lube? he asked. I shook my head. It was too far away, and I didn't want to shatter this moment. I'm mostly immortal. Just fucking shove it in. He bowed his head to mine and took me at my word. My eyes rolled back as he sheathed himself inside me to the hilt, and all the breath left my body as I was filled by the man I loved. Fuck, I growled. Yes, that. More. He groaned over me, and then it was his turn to be in charge, thudding into me, holding himself up with one hand as he worked the other between us, taking my cock in his hand to start to stroke me. And I about came apart with bliss. It was one thing to fuck and be fucked, but to fuck while fresh in love. I didn't think I'd felt more alive since I'd first been bitten. I don't think I can last long, Jack, not after earlier, Paco said his face already tight with the effort of not coming. That's okay, I told him instantly, shaking my head, pushing away any of his fears. Because now we have forever. You have forever, he said with a snort, grinning down at me. I've got like a minute and a half, max. I took his hand around my cock in mine and made him stroke me faster then fuck me hard and make it count. Paco closed his eyes, concentrating, and I felt him stiffen, ready to blow, and I could feel the life inside of him coiling like a snake, ready to strike. God, yes, I hissed. Jack, he groaned. Tell me you love me, I demanded. Tell me you love me when you come. Jack. I, he started, his words stuttering with his strokes, and I imagined the view from the other side, the muscles of his ass clenching as he took mine. His cock kept hitting the right spot deep inside as I made him furiously work my cock with his hand. Jack, I, I, God damn it! I. He made a strangled sound and thrust forward. I love you, he gasped as his hips curved up, launching himself into me, the thick head of his cock rubbing me hard as he came. Fuck, I love you, fuck, fuck, he cried out. And then I was coming too, calling his name as I thrashed beneath him, gasping as ropes of my cum spurted up my chest. I dragged him down against me before he could even think about moving, sealing us together, his breath ragged in my ear, crushing him to me, absorbing everything, not just the life he'd given me, but the way he smelled, how his body fit mine, the taste of his sweat against my lips as I fiercely kissed his neck and jaw. He laughed, 
once he'd caught his breath, happy with himself, exhausted. And the sheer joyful sound of it almost made me hard again. Paco pressed himself up and pushed my hair off my forehead to stare lovingly down. Want a bite? He asked me, taking my interest in his neck as a signal. I licked my tongue across my currently flat teeth. I did. I always did. But I didn't need one. Not after he'd filled me up like that. No, I said. No? He sounded almost offended. No, I repeated, helplessly grinning. I glanced past him toward where I could barely see outside the window, and it had stopped snowing. Let's go outside and look at the stars together. You can't see them in the city. He gawked down at me. Who are you, and what have you done with my boyfriend? I huffed. What? You're the one who wanted to be wholesome, I protested, laughing as I shoved him off of me. There's wholesome, and then there's wholesome, Jack, Paco teased, getting to his feet and snickering. Oh, my God. I got up, tossed another few pieces of wood on the fire, and picked up the sleeping bag to wrap around his shoulders. He crossed his arms in front of himself to hold it like a cape, and I stepped near to kiss him again. If I thought I couldn't get enough of him before, now that I knew he loved me. Stars first, I said, convincing myself as I pulled back, already hungry for rounds three through three thousand. Then we can come back, and I can wholesomely fuck the shit out of you some more. I trailed my fingertips down the now lightly sticky trail of hair on his stomach with intent. Promise? He breathed. Always, I swore.